What is up everyone? My name is Ross and if you're new here and you want to learn more about Photoshop, photography, and other various forms of multimedia witchcraft, I highly suggest you start today by hitting that subscribe button below and turning on those bell notifications so you don't miss a thing. Today, I'm going to show you my five favorite methods to add film grain in Photoshop and you're going to want to stick around to the end because I'm going to organize this video from my least favorite methods all the way up to the creme de la creme to the method I use pretty much 90% of the time. Uh, and to help you out, I'll, I'll add timestamps below so that you can kind of choose your own adventure and, and jump through the video as you see fit. Let's hop into Photoshop. Today, I have a lovely image that I got once again from Unsplash.com. They're not a sponsor, but as you know, I love the quality of images and they allow me to play with so many, so many high quality images. So the first thing we're going to do is add a new black and white adjustment layer because I found that using uh, film grain in Photoshop or with any image, it really looks very tasty on black and white uh, and kind of monochromatic images. So the first thing, we add this black and white adjustment layer. And the cool thing is, is we can pretty much ramp up the contrast by moving these color sliders around to basically darken some areas and lighten other areas. I'm just going to drop the blues a little bit and then I'm going to add a new gradient map. And what Gradient Map does is basically maps colors to luminance values of your image. And by default, I have this pea green uh, color selected. And it was selected because if I delete this layer, uh, down here, it was my in my color swatches or what were active. So I'm going to hit, well, I'll leave it as green. I'll show you what we'll do. We're going to uh, basically add that Gradient Map again. And if you just click on this bar, it brings up a preset, uh, basically, window dialog box. And if you don't see these, don't worry. They are built into Photoshop you can access them by click, clicking this gear icon and you can choose whatever you want. The ones I'm using right here are the photographic toning and they're awesome. You can use them to set sepia tones. You can basically just add them to add a color uh, grade to your image. So I'm not going to click on anything because they're already in here, but I am going to click on one of these at the top to just kind of select a, a sepia tone. And I've selected sepia two. I'm just going to hit OK. Now, fun fact about Photoshop, if you have the move tool selected, which is V, you can hit any number on the keyboard, like five, for instance, and check out opacity over here. It's going to drop it to 50%, just shortcuts because Facebook or Facebook, what am I talking about? Photoshop uh, is awesome when you know all the shortcuts and this is one of them. Hit V, hit five. If you hold shift and hit five, guess what? It's going to drop the fill to 50%. I'm going to hit zero to bump that back up to 100. And I just want it at 50%. Now we're going to add our grain to our image. Whew, that was long winded, but here we go. Hit command, option, shift, E. We're going to stamp a, a visible layer on top of everything. And then we're going to right click and convert this to a smart object. Once again, we convert these things to a smart object because one, we want to work non-destructively in Photoshop. And two, with a smart object uh, created here, any filter that we add to this, we can then uh, basically adjust on the fly down the road uh, if if we need to. It's, not, it's a non-destructive way, two ways to work. So with this now a smart object, we're going to go filter. And the first way, I didn't even mention it, we're just going to add noise. So we're going to go filter, noise, add noise. Get a look at this. We're going to zoom in. The main takeaway from this one is you want monochromatic check down here because if you don't, you're going to get a lot of color noise, which, I mean, if that's what you're after, go for it. Choose your own adventure, but we're going to keep it at monochromatic for my edit, and I'm going to go from Gaussian to Uniform. I'm going to put this at 25, oops, not 35, 25, so that we can see our edits and accept them. I'm going to zoom out. You can clearly see a before and after that we've added grain to this. And once again, because it's a separate layer, we can hit V and drop it to maybe, let's say, 70% by hitting 7 on the keyboard. And that's pretty good. But let's say I, I added too much noise. I can just double click on this layer over here because it is a smart object and edit, um, edit it on the fly. So let's say I want to drop it to 18%. Just drop it down a little bit more. And with this, maybe I bump it back up to 100. And there you go. We've added noise or we've added film grain by using filter add noise in Photoshop. I'm going to undo these edits and we're going to hop into the second way to add film grain to your image in Photoshop. And that is just using an image, an image from the web. So I've got an image, let me pull it up, it's in my finder, that I've just did a Google search for film grain. I'm gonna put this in Photoshop. And here we go, I'm gonna hit Command A to select everything, Command C to copy that, and hop back in our document and hit Command V to paste it. And you might get a, a warning here. You can just hit don't show this again or hit OK. Basically, it's just saying the color profiles are mismatched. I'm not concerned about that because I want it in grayscale anyways, which it's pretty much grayscale. We're gonna hit Command T to transform this, and we basically just wanna cover our image. And with this, the, the magic here that happens is with blend modes, and we're gonna change our blend mode from normal to soft light. And get a look at this. It kind of looks pretty much awesome as is. I'm not even going to touch adjustments after this, but it's added kind of a film, emulsion, kind of grungy effect. 
just by changing the, the blend mode to soft light. And you can play with these other ones. Uh, maybe you want vivid light, and then maybe you drop the fill to like 20% or 30%. You name it. You can just kind of play with these. But I've found that usually overlay and soft light kind of work the best, and I'm a fan of soft light. So that is the second way to add film grain to your image. The third way we're going to go over is just filter gallery. Now, what the hell is filter gallery? Well, with this smart object created over here, or active once again, I'll show you. We'll go filter, filter gallery. And once again, we have a lovely dialog box that opens up. And you might not see this if you're not, if you weren't last active on texture, you might be an artistic or anything. And there's a bunch of kind of cool uh, filters in here, but you got to use them smartly. I'm not a big fan of using filters just to use filters, but if you use them smartly in Photoshop, they're very powerful. So go down the texture and just go grain. And with grain selected, you can basically play with the intensity, contrast, and type uh, in here are your options. So I'm going to do sprinkles sounds so fun. Let's see what stipple does. So stipple is picking up the, once again, the default colors that we had uh, before we got into this filter. So I'm going to go back just to sprinkles because one, it's fun. And two, it's black and white. So we're going to bump down the intensity just a wee bit here and let's see, pump up the contrast a little bit too. That's looking good. Cause I don't want grain necessarily in my highlights. So I'm going to hit okay on this. And it's a bit harsh, right? You would agree with me? Uh, I don't know. I can't hear you. You're not talking to me. Speak louder. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hit V again and just drop this to 50% by hitting 5. That's still pretty harsh, so I'm going to hold Shift and hit 5 to drop the fill. And this is looking pretty good now. So that's the third method? Yeah, that was the third method. Filter gallery. And once again, the magic with these is just playing with the opacity, the fill, and kind of the blending mode. And I didn't even do that. Maybe we maybe we dropped this to soft light. No, screen. Screen might be okay. Before and after on that. Screen lightens it a little bit. I mean, screen is a lightened mode. So that would make sense. So let's go over the fourth way. And I'm going to preface this with the fourth and fifth methods that I'm going to show you are the ones that I use pretty much 100% of the time. These other methods, I'm just showing you once again, so that you know the different ways to do this and you choose whatever, you know, fits for your workflow. So let's scrap these. I'm going to delete that layer and stamp a new one. So the fourth method I'm going to show you is using blur gallery. Now, how are we going to do that? We're going to blur our image to add noise. Well, kind of. So the first thing we're going to want to do is hit command shift N to create a new layer. And what we're going to want to do here is we're going to set our mode to overlay and then make sure you check this box fill with overlay neutral color, which is 50% gray. We're going to hit that and hit okay. Now, if you look over here, our blend mode is set to overlay and we have a neutral gray, uh, layer filled over here. So with this now active, we're going to go filter, blur gallery, and just click field blur. And I'm going to show you the magic that happens here. So we can set our blur to whatever. It's not going to matter because it's we have a solid color layer. It's just going to blur nothing. You're not going to see the effect. But if you go down here, there is a grain dialog box and you can pump this baby as much as you want and bump up the size and roughness. Let's put the size up a little bit more. Let's put the roughness all the way up. Let's hit OK. Let's see what this does. It's going to take a while because the blur, uh, the field blur, any of the blur gallery uh, filters are actually very um, CPU intensive, I think is the word. And here's a before and after. You can see it's definitely added grain. But I made a mistake. I'm going to undo this because I'll show you. So I'm going to do this again. Command, shift, oops, not, oop, 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 oop. command, shift, N, go overlay. No fill, hit OK. I missed a very important step, Ross. You didn't convert it to a smart object. So right click, convert to smart object. We're going to go filter. I'm just going to hit blur gallery again because this is going to apply our last filter that we applied. Let it do its magic. Oh, it's actually going to put me in here. OK. Um, yeah, let's hit OK. It's going to work its magic. Once again, it is uh, highly uh, CPU intensive. And here, it's pretty harsh. So once again, we can drop this uh, opacity a little bit. But once again, if it's a smart object, you can double click on it. Let's say, well, I didn't want the size that big, and I didn't want the roughness definitely not that big. Big, hit OK, and it's gonna work its magic again. Do, 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 do. And once it's done its magic, we've applied noise in our fourth method, method, <laughs> method, which is just using the blur gallery. I'm gonna ditch this now, and I'm gonna show you my favorite way. And I've talked about this in a previous tutorial, which I'll link above, but I didn't show you how to add noise in it. I showed you how to color grade in it, but I'm gonna show you right now to add noise. So make sure, once again, this is a smart object. If it wasn't a smart object, stamp a new one, convert it to smart object, go filter, camera raw filter. This is my favorite filter, as you know, uh, in 
Photoshop. So go over here, you have these toolbars, and if you go all the way over here to FX, there's this first effect that is grain, and you can play with this as you see fit. Once again, it's kind of like the same uh, parameters and uh, attributes that you can set in the blur tool. It's just a different way to do it. Let's zoom in to see what's happening here. And I haven't compared the different methods, but I'm sure these different methods definitely apply the grain in a different matter. And that grain, that, that film grain, is going to basically be, be different for each method. And once again, I usually use this because I just, I don't know, it's, I'm always in Adobe Camera Raw when I'm finishing up my image. And so this is just kind of a last method for me to apply grain to it. I'm going to hit OK. And once again, that's harsh. So I'm going to hit V and drop it to maybe like 40%, maybe 50%, 60%. That's looking pretty good. Here, let's show it before and after. I mean, it's pretty subtle, but you get that pretty awesome grain effect. That's it, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something. I hope it wasn't too stressful. It was a little stressful for me, but hey, I stick in there for you guys. Once again, my name is Ross, and I will catch you guys next time.